I've actually broke that. <laughs> Howdy guys, it's Luke at Luke's APS and in this video we're going to make some mistakes. But it's all part of learning. I'll see you after this. So guys, yes, Igloo Mars sent me this printer through uh, to have a play with. Um, I'm going to be using 3D printers and resin printers uh, for a lot of detailing and stuff on all the board builds that I've got coming over the next 12 months. Especially when we're doing a lot of sci-fi stuff, I want all them them little bitty, little bitty bits to play with and stick on terrain and stuff just to make things better. I will show you how to make some bits, but there's just some bits that I can just print. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Awesome tool for terrain makers and miniature painters. So I've got absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I've never touched one. I've never actually seen one in the flesh. I've held some 3D printed stuff before, but I've never actually used one. So I thought this would be a good video just to go through everything from start to me printing. And as I learn, I can do bits of videos and stuff on the printer if I do anything that I think it's worth documenting. A bit like my wet palette video that I did. I've got no idea and I'm just going to show you how I learn across. So let's get to set up, um, let's get plugged in, let's see how to set this thing up. I might have to watch a couple of videos. <laughs> I'll show you around the printer and then we'll get it set up. So first off uh, I level the printer just so that the resin, uh, when it's in the resin vat, is just level uh, rather than being deeper at one side than the other. To make sure it's level, I'm just using a, an app on my phone. I do know that that's not going to be 100% perfect, but it's good enough just to make sure that it's pretty level. Then from that, after watching Black Magic Craft's video with uh, Danny from 3D Printed Tabletop, uh, I remove the film and give this a bit of a wipe. Um, because there is quite a bit of static on the film, plus there's a lot of dust in it from the packaging material. And once you've removed the film, um, get yourself a microfiber cloth and then just wipe around the uh, resin vat and just remove all that dust. Um, it is quite staticky, so you might have to do this again before printing because it might attract more in the meantime. Now, let's level that bed. I'm going to get the biggest Allen key out the, uh, the tool kit. I'm just going to loosen these off slightly. And that's made it nice and loose now. And then cut a piece of paper to a rough size of the bed and then press that one I think which is a picture of it going down to the level and once it's done that I'll square it off I'll tighten it up a little bit this is what's scary about this stuff because I don't know whether I'm supposed to be doing it like this but I'm sure we'll find out. <laughs> See, it's pretty loose going in there, but when you come to the back, you can't get it in at all, so that's not obviously not level. Second time lucky. Now I'm going to hold it in place while I'm doing it. I think what shifted it is because while I was tightening and loosening this, there was no pressure on the bed. Um, so we'll see if this works. Now in the box uh, that it came with, um, it came with a USB drive, which has got the, soft, the, the software on uh, for setting up your own struts and everything. Because I've never done any 3D printing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this off with the test print that's built into this. Um, just because, one, I want to make sure I've leveled the bed properly. I wanna see if it's if it's gonna be correct when it prints off. And I know what that's supposed to look like, whether if I go on to say Thingiverse and download something and something prints out wrong, is that me or could it be the file or? So I'm gonna do the test print just because I'm a complete novice and I've got no chuffing clue what I'm on about. Um, so let's get that loaded up. We'll pour some resin in and then I'll see you in a couple of hours. Now the resin they've sent with the printer is uh, the blue resin. Um, I don't know what this is supposed to be. 
um, if it's supposed to be better or anything else like that um, but they sent me this I know if you buy the printer you don't get any resin okay so do bear that in mind if you do buy a, any glue Mars uh, but they sent me the blue resin to play with Let's shake it up well and then we'll pour this about a third full apparently so I've got to the uh, the test print just by going through the menus and it looks like to look like two castles you've probably seen them before if you've watched videos on this um, and I'm just gonna press play I think is that gonna do it see I don't know this is this is complete I don't know what's happening mode um, I've pressed play so hopefully play means go and it is lowering it um, I'll put the top on because I don't know what's gonna happen Complete nerves. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Um, it's showing two discs, so that's obviously the first layer that it's going to cure. Um, and it says it's going to take about four hours. It paused for a good couple of minutes before doing anything, and then it's lifted up and gone back down again. Um, I'm, a, I'm a bit nervous because. On the YouTube videos, it seems to be very a lot quicker, so I don't know whether I've done something wrong. But we'll, uh, I'll come back to you in a bit. It turns out that the first few layers, uh, when they're exposing in the printer, do take a lot longer. It can take up to a minute to cure each layer, so the start of the print will take longer than the rest. So while they're on this tilted piece it just pushes in screws on like you would fit it on top it's very simple to use um, I'm gonna let that drip off for a good 20 minutes half an hour um, and then we'll uh, we'll wash them and we'll rinse them the details there I can't see any sort of errors inside um, there is some resin on there that's not uncured so I can't see the full detail till they've been washed but it looks like a successful print one thing that I have heard people complaining about is the smell like a rubbery smell but it's hardly noticeable um, so there might be some smellier resins out there but this blue stuff it, I can hardly smell it but anyway we're gonna pop them off so we'll just take them off the plate like this We'll get a scraper tool and we'll just try and bang them off. Uh, they're actually on there quite well and that's no good. Um, I'll use a, a blade, try and get it under there. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> just broke one oh, wow they're on there um, but yes they're, they're definitely on there um, but the details are looking pretty good I did break one trying to get it off with my hand uh, so I wouldn't advise that But as you can see, this is not this is not easy. I've actually broke that. <laughs> um, this is not going well. Great, I'm gonna have a play at trying to get this off. Right, so for cleaning, I'm using this um, pickle tub. Um, I've seen these all over on like. Danny from 3D Printer Tabletop. A lot of people use the like clear containers with the green lids. Now to get them in the UK, they're very expensive because uh, they seem to be only made in America for some strange reason. Um, but these ones are made by uh, Lock and Seal, uh, which is a big company in the UK or that deal in the UK. I don't know whether they're manufactured here or not. Um, but you can pick these up from most shops. Um, I got this picked this was the last one in the shop so I don't know how accessible they are um, but they should be online if they buy lock and seal then there should be plenty of them because lock and seals everywhere it's in Hasda um, so if, you, if the shop hasn't got them you should be able to source it if I do find an internet link I'll pop it in the links but 
lock and seal, that's what you want to be looking under. Isopropanol, I'll drop it in there. And we'll give them a, a rinse a Now for curing it inside, if I mean you can just throw them outside for a couple of hours, um, but everybody seems to be using these, so I've got myself one so I can, whenever I finish a print, I can cure it. They're only about 12 quid. Now the reason I went for the Miley, Miley nail, um, what's it called? Professional UV gel nail lamp. Um, it's got a, it's already got a mirrored tray on the bottom, so I don't have to mess around with tin foils and stuff like that. Um, so I literally, I'm only going to be doing miniatures and stuff and like air conditioning units and pipes and bits and pieces like that anyway. So I got this one because it just, I don't have to mess around, it's an all in one unit. So I can just chuck them in there, it's already flexible, it's a nice little neat unit. And I thought for 12 quid, it's perfect. And you can run it with a timer or without a timer, so you can just leave it running, which is pretty good. And I thought for 12 quid, saves you messing around. However, if you are wanting to do bigger things, you could take the plate out of the bottom and just raise one side up and put some tin foil down if you're doing like a bust or something. But for what I'm doing, this is going to be ample. So there's loads of places online, free, paid, um, Kickstarters, all sorts online for loads of things to print off. I bought some squigs, I'll throw the links below to where I bought them from. Now what I did is I dropped them into the uh, software that came with the printer and I just auto supported. Um, I did one as big as I could and I did two small ones to see if there's any quality difference between larger and small models. The details came out great, however the supports did fail on me uh, and I lost a few teeth. So this made me understand I now have to add some manual supports as well as uh, using auto supports, uh, which I, pr I do improve on this later. However there was an awful lot and cleaning these models is a pain in the ass. However, once you've cleaned them, they do come out looking really nice. And as you can see here, the teeth and, you know, the top three teeth have failed to print. Um, so I now know that overhangs like in the mouths and things like that, where there is no supports, that do require them sometimes. Here's a quality of difference of the really tiny ones. They're one inch grids. Um, so you can see how small they actually are. They're, uh, they're pretty small. They're a lot smaller than the squigs that you're used to seeing. Um, but the detail on them is pretty well. Now I turned to Danny from 3D Printed Tabletop to his Kickstarter, which all the links will be below, and his models have no supports or very minimal supports, so I could practice adding supports and seeing where I was going wrong. With this, I got it right. The supportless one, obviously, is just as easy as pressing print, and the one that needs supports, I just applied some around the hands where I thought the hoverhangs would be and under his chin, and it worked great. So now knowing what I know now made printing other models a lot easier. So people like Danny that do their models that are easier to print are a good grounds to learn from. So I got a more complicated model. This is from the Artisan Guild. Uh, again, links will be below. Um, as you can see, I did auto support under the body and I tilted it back 45 degrees. So all the supports were going under the legs and under its bum and places where you're not going to see that often. And then the, autumn, the ones that I applied manually, I made sure they were sticking to bits of bone uh, or somewhere that was, wasn't as smooth um, so you could scrape it off better. Um, and it turned out pretty well. Um, I haven't had any failed prints doing it this way, so I will do this way till I get some errors. And once it's all cleaned up, um, they look awesome. I mean, as you can see, um, the extra supports that I've put on that it does look quite a lot to clean up, but it didn't take me too long. It took me about 15 minutes um, to clean all the parts. And once it's glued together, it's a really nice model. The learning curve with the with the printing is adding supports. Um, so I gave myself a weekend to understand the very minimal and basics. Using a printer is pretty simple. However, learning how overhangs are affected by supports is the thing you've got to do and to do that you've got to print models so using models like danny's from 3d printed tabletop will help massively because you don't have that many places to put the supports on a lot of models so you can teach yourself how important they are in certain places and that's what i did and i got okay results um, so i moved on to some different models and tried that and it worked great um so thank you for danny for um sending me the models to use uh, and do check his kickstarter out below
So guys, I hope you've liked this video. Um, I thought I'd do like how I've learned to 3D print from day one. I gave myself the weekend to get the basics down, okay? I thought it'd be a better way of showing you how simple it is doing it that way rather than me learning it for a month or two and then doing a video because then it's like, look at how easy this is, look at how easy this is, because you forget. Um, so for me, the actual 3D printing part, like setting up the printer and stuff like that, that were a piece of poddle. I had no issues with that whatsoever. The bit that I did find the hardest was the, the supports and learning about the undercuts and how it all works that way using the software. I do feel a little bit more confident, but I do know I've got a hell of a lot to learn. And if I was to change resins or if I were to change any settings, I do know that I will have a lot more to learn that way. But the results I'm getting now, I am very happy with. And I don't see the point of tinkering much because I don't feel that the printers could do much better than what they are doing. Um, if they can, put in the comments below, um, but I'm sure it all depends on the actual size of the model. I'm finding that models around 45 mil ish are a good size. If they're under that, they start going a bit soft and the bigger they are, the better they look. So I'm going to, I'm going to say that's about as much, but maybe could squeeze a little bit more quality out of that printer if I had a proper tinker, but I don't know for certain. But if you do, let me know in the comments below. If you do like these videos, guys, don't forget you can support me by using my shop. Um, it's a, full of scenics, so if you're making, you know, you're painting your models, you want to base your miniatures, or you're making full gaming tables. Check out all my scenics below. If you'd like this printer, um, there's an affiliated link down there, so if you want to buy the Elegumars, uh, I get a bit of a cutback. Um, all the, if you want any just Games Workshop stuff or out like that, check the Element Games link as well. If you do want my uh, products in your country, if you're not from England, check for us international resellers. All the links are below. All the links to every, uh, all the models and everything that I've used in this video are below as well. So if you want to print them out yourself, you can do. And if you'd like to see more 3D printing content, do let me know. Um, it is rather interesting. I can see why it's so addictive. I just want to print everything at the minute because um, it's really nice. It's like having a new model every day or two a day even. It's awesome. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you for the next video. Love, love, love.